A sales page can turn prospects into online course customers, or it could confuse them and scare them away. But you don't have to be a professional copywriter to create an effective sales page. Here's how to build a sales page that converts. Writing an effective sales page is like writing great marketing copy for any project. If you've already done the hard work to really understand your audience and what they're trying to accomplish, then the hardest part is already finished. Now there are plenty of great copywriting formulas out there if you search on Google, but the one that we recommend is the simple and straightforward PAS formula by the legendary copywriter Dan Kennedy. PAS stands for Problem Agitate Solution. And to use it, you just write your sales page in the following order. What is the problem that your course solves for your students? State it at the very top of your sales page. That's your headline. Remember, don't worry about wordsmithing anything. Just use the words that you've seen your audience using to describe their challenges. Next, A, agitate. What are the pains that this problem causes for your prospects? List them here in the next section, both as a reminder and a warning of what the cost of not solving the problem could be. If you've been following along in the past videos, one thing you'll notice as we go through this sales copy is that if you've done the research beforehand, you can actually repurpose a lot of the sales copy that you use from your emails on your sales page. I know I was. I've always loved reading cookbooks and browsing cooking sites, dreaming about making all of the fancy dishes they contained. But dreaming about it was where it stopped. Because as I read the steps, I knew that I wasn't going to tackle these dishes for three reasons. My version would come out nothing like the photos in the recipe. I'd call it rustic, but really it would just look sloppy. It would take me way, way longer to cook than recipes said they should. It would come out wrong because I'd see steps in the recipe that seemed tedious and skip them all together. Butterfly the chicken? Nope. A few years ago, I was watching a cooking show where home cooks competed to create their best dishes, which then got judged by professional chefs. As one of the home cooks frantically struggled to finish her dish on time, the celebrity chef judge snidely remarked, My three-year-old has better knife skills. In that moment, I realized two things. First, that either he's a jerk or the producers told him to act like one. And second, that my knife skills, although I never thought of them that way, were exactly like hers. I have to be honest, even though they were directed at some lady I'd never met, Michael's comments made me feel pretty bad about myself. Despite the fact that I liked to cook, I was a complete amateur when it came to knife skills. Finally, the big reveal. Share the solution to the reader's problem and why they should act on it right now. I'll always remember that moment as the one when I decided to do something about it. And I'm glad I did, because it made me realize that all of those fears in the kitchen, about my food not coming out right, about recipes taking too long, had nothing to do with me not being a great chef, and had everything to do with knife skills. After years of working on my knife skills, and lots of trial and error, I'm more confident in the kitchen than ever. I see recipes that call for complicated cuts. Did somebody call for a brunoise? We're chopping huge piles of vegetables, and I'll just smile and say, bring it on. It's made cooking at home so much more fun, and the look on my friends' faces when they see me in the kitchen is priceless. I didn't know you were a chef. I'm not, of course. I've just learned to cut like one. It may seem like a trivial thing, but I can honestly say that developing great knife skills has changed my life. And if you've ever been frustrated by how long a recipe takes to make, or backed down from cooking a dish because you were intimidated by it, or felt bad that you couldn't impress your date with a gorgeous meal, then it can change your life too. But I'll be honest, it took me a long time and I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I took dozens of knife skills classes, from the local kitchenware shop to the culinary institute. I read every book and watched every YouTube video I could get my hands on. I even hired a professional chef to coach me for a day. And while I've learned an incredible amount, I've also come to understand something. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Out of everything I've learned, only a few things, less than 10%, really matter when I step into my home kitchen every day. All of that training was a great way to satisfy my curiosity and perhaps prep me for the culinary career I'll never have. But as a home cook who just wants to be more confident in the kitchen, it was too much. The problem is that nobody offers to teach you those few key things and only those few key things. To really master knife skills for a home kitchen, you either have to spend a ton of time or a ton of money, or both, learning more than you need to, and then try to parse that for what's truly important. Until now. 
Over the past few months, I've been working on distilling those key lessons into a course that's designed to teach you to use a knife with confidence. No matter your current skill level, no matter what knives you have, no matter what kind of food you want to cook. And today, I want to share that course with you. Knife Skills 101 Learn to Cut with Confidence is a five-week course that'll help you overcome any hesitation you have in the kitchen so that you can tackle any recipe you see with confidence, actually finish cooking recipes in the time listed on the recipe, or often faster, and impress your friends and loved ones with our chef-like abilities. The course is now available, and I invite you to enroll today. And there it is. An effective sales page doesn't have to be complicated. Just by using a simple formula like PAS, you can create a sales page that connects deeply with your audience. Now before you launch, there are two other accessories that you might want to consider for your sales page that could drive conversion rates up. The first is called social proof. Social proof is a psychology concept that's often used in marketing. In fact, you've probably seen it used more than once today. According to Dr. Robert Cialdini in his famous book, Influence, we view a behavior as more correct in a given situation to the degree that we see others performing it. Simply put, if you want to convince someone that something is a good idea, show them that other people think it's a good idea too. You'll see this often on websites in the form of testimonials and client logos, and you can use it to your advantage by including testimonials from past students who have completed your course. Launching your course for the first time? No problem. You can still use testimonials to get your prospective students to trust you by getting testimonials from people who can attest to your skills, even if they haven't taken the course, just like this. The second sales page accessory to consider is a money back guarantee. This is what we call risk reversal. Risk reversal is exactly what it sounds like. It removes the risk from buying your product. For online courses, the most common way to do this is with a money back guarantee. Here's what Joanna Weeb, a course creator and the founder of Copy Hackers, said about money back guarantees. I hope that these copywriting tips show you that great copywriting doesn't require being a great writer. It just requires being thoughtful and thorough. Thanks for watching.